finally, we have a full-blown trailer for Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Even though it's not the full trailer that was previously released by Paramount, this one certainly makes up for it in many new ways. Not only have we got the dedicated character teasers in last week for all of the main characters of Strange New Worlds, but now the main big trailer, and it's fantastic. Along with the Enterprise, Captain Pike looking fantastic as per usual, and some scenes of Spock getting a little freaky with a certain character, the trailer packs it all. We'll soon be exploring the adventures of Pike's early years commanding of the USS Enterprise, along with delving deeper into certain characters like Number One, and expanding upon their backstory. Now while we still don't have international air date details for the series yet, it still means we can take a look at what is coming down the pipeline. We are hoping that Paramount are going to make an announcement regarding this core detail sometime soon, perhaps this week. But until then, let's boldly go into the final frontier. Welcome to Trek Central, I'm your host Captain Jack and let's get straight into it. We're less than five weeks away from the series premiere of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. While we currently have Star Trek Picard to keep us busy and full of Trek content, we're not denying that Strange New Worlds AK Pike series is one hyping us up now and getting us carried away. It's been about three years almost since we last saw Pike leave in Discovery Season 2, so now he's finally getting his own series after a long fan campaign and much online chatter. It has been a long road getting from there to here, but let's celebrate and break down the latest trailer for Strange New Worlds. Before we do dive into today's video, did you know we're only 25 subscribers away from 100k here on YouTube? Help us out and keep up to date with the latest Star Trek news, learn more by hitting that subscribe button to never miss a video from myself and the team here at Trek Central. We're keeping you up to date with the latest Star Trek Strange New Worlds news and many more things from the Star Trek universe. So if you two are talking about Star Trek, then comment down below as we would love to hear about it. Okay, hit it. Now like usual, sadly we can't show you the full trailer on screen due to Paramount copyright issues, but there is a link in the video description for you to watch the full trailer in 4K 60fps. Once you've done that, unpause this video and tune back in for a breakdown of the trailer. So, the opening of the trailer shows a city within the clouds. Now, it's entirely possible this is just a futuristic city with a little bit of a cloud around it. However, I did have an interesting theory of where this location could be. In Star Trek The Original Series, the USS Enterprise, under the command of Captain James T. Kirk, would visit a planet known as Ardana, where they would find themselves visiting the elevated metropolises known as Stratos, or Stratos, however you want to pronounce it. Stratos was the capital city of Ardana and was a cloud city, finding itself elevated above the clouds as the name would suggest. It's possible that this city in the trailer might be Stratos, and the planet was scheduled to be featured in Star Trek Enterprise, to be visited by Jonathan Archer and the crew of the NX-01. Sadly, that storyline was never produced due to the show's cancellation with the fourth season. Anyway, in the trailer we do see some people in this cloudy city in some fierce debate, but two sides are arguing over something, when out of nowhere, Captain Pike beams in from the Enterprise, immediately pausing the debate as they're stunned. Christopher does apologise for interrupting their debate, but what is the debate even about? Luckily we do have some clues. While we don't know for sure, it might be about war and genocide. Thanks to behind the scenes pictures which Trek Central have linked with the filming of Strange New Worlds last year, there will be protests around the area, between the species and characters protesting about a war going on. Now our first thought about this species, we'd perhaps seen them before, such as the Antaran seen in Star Trek Enterprise, but now looking at this even more, personally, I'm not sure on that theory just yet. We do also get a very nice shot of the Enterprise out in the clouds, and oh my, does she look beautiful out there. More on the Enterprise later on. This sky city is also seen later in the trailer as well, and as we have multiple sky cities in this season, you can very clearly see buildings on top of the clouds, and not just at the cloud layer of the sky, which is very fascinating. I presume the next shot of some guards running with spears on a walkway is also from the same sky city, but there appears to be lava underneath the clouds. We know Adana was a mining planet, but it mined its resource, Zenite, by hand. But there still could be lava underneath their cities, or this could just be a reimagination of a planet and its people. Throughout the series and trailers of Strange New Worlds, we've got on this scene of a landing party in AVA suits beaming down to a comet. Where this is ancient grand architecture of alien ruins located on the comet. Now one thing I think is really cool is that these EVA suits are an evolution from the environmental suits seen in Star Trek Discovery, but also seems to have a strand which goes towards looking more like the environmental suits in the original series. In Discovery, these environmental suits had the main body be coloured in the different division colours, whereas now part of a chest plate is coloured in the occupant's division colour. The shape of the division colour part of the environment suits is remarkably similar to the shape seen in the original series environmental suits as well, so you can clearly see they're tying it together. There's some reference material on screen right now. 
It seems like inside this ancient grand alien ruin is what looks to be a giant egg, which electrocutes a random landing party member in classic TOS fashion. I wouldn't even be surprised if this man dies after this encounter, who knows. Now this might be a good time to talk about the breath of strange new worlds we're seeing in these trailers, and I think that is the use of the AR LED wall which Discovery Season 4 started using. It's shown the full effect in we have of strange new worlds so far. It's shown the full effect in what we have of strange new worlds so far. From this asteroid to later scenes of Lan and Number One standing on the hull of the Enterprise without environmental suits to Vulcan and other wild alien architecture. You have to give credit to the number of artists whose work goes into really not just taking us, but the actors on to visit these strange new worlds as well. It blows me away. One of our episodes of Strange New Worlds seems to be the crew dealing with some sort of medical emergency aboard the ship. All our characters seem to be wearing this weird badge above their Delta badge. Perhaps some sort of remote health monitor? Hopefully this episode centers very heavily around Dr. Mbenga and Nurse Chapel. It would be great to see both the characters and really establish them inside a Strange New Worlds as well. There was previous footage of Number One collapsing into the sick bay, and we get some more sick bay shots, where almost every biobed is occupied by a member of the crew. Strange New Worlds was filmed under the times of COVID-19, and this could be the inspiration for writers tapped into when writing this episode. Sigma also looks very big, with a very open look view to it, and also occupying two decks. Whenever we saw Sigma in Enterprise, or in the original series, it wouldn't operate both those decks. So that's rather interesting. Some people are already saying this Sigma is a bit too big for the original series and Strange New Worlds, and I even know Galaxy Class didn't have that much space. Well, fun fact, Galaxy Class side just had three Sigmas, and some of them were rather large. Now, there are some interesting Spock scenes in this trailer, even going so far as to have a sex scene between himself and Dupring, played by Gia Sandhu. Fun fact, we broke the news of Gia Sandhu last year on Trek Central, you can see the tweet on screen right now. Yay. Now, it seems like these sequences are dream sequences between the two characters, perhaps because of their minds being melded. What leads us to believe this, other than the fact Spock should not only go through Pondfar for the first time in a mock time, a whole seven years after this takes place, but because of one particular sequence. We see Spock fighting against, well, Spock. Yes, wielding Lurpers on Vulcan, the Vulcan and human sides of Spock fight it out. This was a main point brought up in a character teaser trailer for Spock early in the week. This conflict of Vulcan versus human which wages inside him. We might see that physicalize itself on screen in the first season of Strange New Worlds, and what a great way to establish a character and add even more depth to him. Not only will Strange New Worlds show us a new alien species, some of which have been seen in previous teaser trailers, but it seems like it'd be expanding this by not only having humans in prosthetics, but perhaps some puppetry as well. There is a small shot of this green gremlin reptile looking alien hissing while sparks go flying. We could get an episode where this gremlin somehow gets on board the ship and causes all sorts of havoc. Whatever the case, I love by doing what looks to be puppetry for that alien. So many things are CGI nowadays, all the use of their brilliant prosthetic guys for aliens and all sci-fi but it used to be a lot of puppet work, which holds up extremely well in modern day times as well. So getting a chance to do that is great. More practical effects for the win, I love it. Some more aliens are a tribal looking society of purple skinned aliens with cranial ridges down the back of their skull. They look to be enjoying the rain that has come to their planet, perhaps the work of the Enterprise and Pike's crew. In the Pike teaser trailer, we saw a side of Pike which is playing fast and loose with the rules. Perhaps this could be similarly applied to the Prime Directive the order not to interfere with non-warp capable civilizations. A similar situation to the opening scenes of Star Trek Into Darkness, where the crew Enterprise stop a volcano from wiping out a civilization. Might we see Pike's Enterprise solve a drought which threatens to wipe out a civilization as well? Now we previously remarked on this scene, but thought it might be better to go into it in a bit more detail in this trailer breakdown. This is the scene of Lan and Number One standing on the outside of a hull of what looks to be the Enterprise. Now, let's just disregard the fact that they're standing in space without an environmental suit, but an object begins to approach them. This object looks to be a solar sailor, a vessel which uses sails to propel itself from radiation. We think this due to the reflective gold material the sails look to be made of, and the general sail shape. The last time we saw a solar sailor in Star Trek was in the Deep Space Nine episode, Explorers, where Captain Benjamin Sisko built his own of some old Bajoran blueprints. Perhaps someone on the Enterprise built a solar sailor in their own spare time, or is testing it out. It's Star Trek, anything's possible. Now throughout these trailers we do have some tri-wing configured alien spaceships attacking the USS Enterprise. Well it seems like this ship has more of a story to it, as in this trailer we can see it shining green light onto a bigger ship of similar design. The smaller ship is already a similar size to the USS Enterprise, only slightly smaller, so having some sort of mothership is insane. Perhaps the small ship is a drone ship, 
trying to find something the Enterprise has in order to awaken its mothership. I don't know, we could theorise for days. Whatever the situation might be, these ship designs are really cool and I look forward to seeing them in action. Now Captain Pike is seen talking to another purple skinned alien species, and I have to say this species looks somewhat close to the Axonar seen in Star Trek Enterprise. And if that name sounds familiar to you, it might be around the time frame, probably a few years before the conflict broke out over Axonar involving Garth of Isa from the original series. Could we perhaps seeing some ramifications of the fight from the Axonar people perspective compared to the madman Garth who viewed himself as a hero? Perhaps this is why they are so hostile towards Pike in this scene, who knows? They seem to be the owners of a ship we previously theorised could be an Orion starship, the massive space station looking ship that begins firing on Enterprise. An interesting note in the scene is that Uhura is not only in a different uniform variant with a more open neckline, much like the uniform she would come to wear under Kirk's command of the Enterprise, but also she's no longer a cadet, but a lieutenant if her cuff ranks are to be believed. I think this would really cool to see her go from a cadet to ensign, but maybe lieutenant be a bit of a jump. Maybe the rank cuffs are different rank during Pike's tenure compared to Kirk's. Who knows, something could be explained. She is definitely looking great and coming into a role as the strong cable of her we know and love. Celia Rose Gooding has some big shoes to fill, and it looks like she's doing a great job at it. Now a good segment of this trailer is dedicated to what looks to be a Ren Faire style episode, with a crew dressed up in medieval outfits, fighting of swords and bows. Against such equipped individuals, I don't know, it gets a bit weird. Lieutenant Ortigas is dressed like a swashbuckling musketeer. Number one as a lone ranger, and a her as a queen? I am definitely looking forward to this episode as this really is a strange new world. The environment being set seems to just be the hallway of the Enterprise but covered in vines and stuff, so perhaps as a Federation ship crashed on a medieval planet, it wouldn't be the first time this has happened to Starfleet after all, and we do see a crashed ship in the trailer. A fun idea of this links into Star Trek Lower Decks, the animated series, and seeing the Hyperions, the people who Chief Engineer Billups of the US Cerritos is the prince of. This would definitely be some connectivity between our new Trek shows, which I wasn't expecting, but I will welcome gladly. Now on this note, I have to say that the costumes of Star Trek Strange New Worlds are really knocking it out of the park. These medieval style outfits are super neat, and with a red dragon scale like armour, but not only are the medieval outfits great, just all the outfits for the show in general. We're really getting masters of their crafts working these shows, and need to give it a shout out to all the people who make these shows possible. Not just the writers, directors and actors, but the artists and costume people who make the shows what they are, and really bring out the look of it. In recent times of Star Trek, we've been treated to the best looking arts and material. Just take Star Trek Picard. Dave Blass and his production team have done a great job in bringing the USS Stargazer to life. Take a look on screen of what I mean right now. Modern Star Trek, whether you like it or not, is really pushing the boundaries in visual and practical effects. Seriously, I could spend all day exploring the Enterprise and the likes of a Stargazer. They do look absolutely beautiful. Okay, let's talk about Captain Pike, our main man. Pike is found in bed of a woman, which I definitely didn't expect to see in the trailer, but what it remains interesting here is his hair remains absolutely perfect. How does the man do it? Who is this woman and how do we know her? Now, there is one time in his trailer where Pike's hair isn't perfect. Damn. He seems to have been captured and beaten up by some random thugs on a planet. One of them could be an Orion if you look closely enough. This could be the unauthorised mission to go into non-Federation space. Pike goes on to what we see in Pike's character's teaser trailer, considering he's wearing his tactical gear. So it seems like the mission didn't go according to plan. I mean, Mr. Star Trek, when does anything go according to plan? We'll come back to Pike in just a moment. Star Trek likes to blow planets up, and it seems like Strange New Worlds is no exception to that rule. As we see a planet blow up, and it's being observed by Lan, who is actually one of Strange New Worlds' new shuttlecraft. This is probably in the episode where Lan and Spock are stuck in his shuttle, and Lan confides in Spock about her backstory which we do see her do in the character trailer. Speaking of ships, as teased in a few of the character reveal trailers and mentioned in our previous breakdowns of the Strange New Worlds trailer, it appears the Enterprise does get boarded somehow. While Spock is giving a little talk about not only knowing the future, we do see him dodging phaser shots on the bridge in the next scene. These alien intruders also appear on other decks during Nurse Chapel's character trailer, so it's likely the Enterprise does get boarded at some point in the series. This isn't super surprising, as the leadership always does get boarded and somewhat taken over in the Star Trek shows. Yikes. Number one can also be seen taking cover behind Pike's captain's chair it seems, and she fires phasers back at the alien invaders. It's likely the ship, or one of the alien species that are seen in the trailers are attacking those and boarding the Enterprise, but we can't get a quite clear look of them just yet due to the quality of the trailers and footage. Hopefully more details later down the line. 
Now, speaking about the Enterprise being boarded, I have to quickly comment on how good the USS Enterprise is looking in these trailers. As I mentioned earlier, not only the exterior of the ship, which has not changed too much since we last saw in Discovery, but also the interior. Now, the interior has had a giant makeover, including a bridge of the Starship itself. Previously in Star Trek Discovery, the bridge was very large and rather big and kind of blue. Here they've redesigned the bridge totally it seems, bringing it close to what we would see in the original series. Obviously it's not going to be exactly the same as TOS, as the style is very outdated now for modern television. Personally I find the new fresh design more pleasing on the eyes and generally a pleasure to look at. You know, I can't wait to see other sections of the Enterprise as well. Pike's conference room looks beautiful, as well as main engineering and even the transporter room with the ever so beautiful Chief Kyle, the transporter chief. By the way, do you want a breakdown or a dedicated breakdown on the USS Enterprise, such as the bridge, before Strange New Worlds? Do let us know in the comment section below. Okay, we're back to talking about Pike because we've got even more Pike facts to talk about. We knew from the get-go that Strange New Worlds would have to touch on the fact that Christopher Pike does know how his life will end thanks to Star Trek Discovery introducing the Time Crystal story development. Pike does appear to allude to this in the teaser trailer and his character trailer a little bit, but will this affect the storyline going forward? All I love is that this trailer gives us is it really shows this prophesied fate of Captain Pike weighs heavily on his mind. And of course it does, I mean it would weigh heavily on anyone if he knew how he was going to die. He knows that this fate will happen to him and he cannot run away from that. How can a man move forward with his life when he knows the destination is so bleak? And that being the central conflict for Pike as a character in The Strange New Worlds is amazing. I cannot wait to see how he comes to terms with this and how it affects his judgement in the series as well. We get scenes from Strange New Worlds of Pike seeing his Delta Ray exposed face in reflections on board the ship. He can't stop seeing his future, but how will that affect him? All good things I'm looking forward to seeing in the series. A lot of the footage of a training mission going on and Pike being put in the chair is lifted straight from Discovery Season 2. But that makes complete sense as is what happened, so why reshoot it? It just further means that the main engineering of a Class J starship looks like the engineering lab of a Crossfield class. We do get Spock telling Pike that knowledge of death is vital for effective leadership, and the trainer makes us believe this is Pike confiding to Spock about his eventual fate, but this might be a misdirect. Pike telling Spock does work well, considering it is Spock who would go then on to commit mutiny to get Pike to Talos 4 after this entire incident. However, this scene could go further into the Pike we saw in the cage, who was distraught and considering leaving the service because of the death of a few officers. Maybe, and just maybe here, stick with me, this is why we see Pike all dishevelled with his beard riding his horse. At the opening of a trailer, he could be taking the loss of the US's discovery, sending it into the future and not knowing their fates. He could be taking it pretty seriously, and it's Spock who managed to talk him back into Starfleet and taking command of the Enterprise again. If I had to theorise, this is likely where we find Captain Pike. I imagine something has happened since we last saw him in the second season final of Star Trek Discovery, and he has temporarily left Starfleet, hence someone asking him to come back into the fold and take command of the Enterprise once again. Who this person is asking him back also remains a mystery, though part of me does wish it could be Robert April. Thanks to the release of the trailer, Paramount have also released brand new promotional pictures for Strange New Worlds. We've got some on screen right now, including a great look at Captain Christopher Pike as well as number one. Not only do these pictures mean that we finally got some great thumbnail images, thanks to Paramount, but also the HD looks our characters and sets so far. Seriously, look at Pike's shots in both the bridge of the Enterprise as well as its ready room. All of the set designs are fantastic as I mentioned earlier. We're putting a few of these promo pictures on screen right now as they do look fantastic. But if you want to see the whole collection, head over to trekcentral.net and our social media for even more in-depth images. So what do you think about Star Trek Strange New Worlds trailer so far? This is of course our main lead up to this series premiere. There are likely more details in the pipeline, such as international air dates. But for now, we don't know. We'll be sure to bring you the latest news as soon as we get it. If you enjoy talking about Star Trek, then come and join the conversation with us by commenting down below your thoughts on the latest video. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. For now, I've been Captain Jack, thanks for watching, and we'll see you very soon in Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Live long prosper, my friends. Goodbye. Authorized trips into non-Federation space. Someone's playing fast and loose with the rules today.
I know me. It's the Boy Scout. I know exactly how and when my life ends. Knowledge of death is vital for effective leadership. You can't stop seeing it. Would make me hesitant. How will it live in me?